Hello, AP Lit. I'm back. Um, hopefully, aw, I scared Levi. He was sleeping. It's okay. Oh, he's back. Can I continue, sir? Okay. Okay, so we have a lot to talk about with this passage. We're going to talk about the Beat Queen. Um, hopefully you've already gone through this. Hopefully you've already broken down. Hopefully you've taken your notes on setting because that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, okay, so let's start with the prompt. The following excerpt is from the opening of the Beat Queen. So like Miss Brie Holtz told you last week, uh, opening, this is the very beginning of the novel. This might have some impact on how the characters are portrayed. We're definitely going to get a lot of setting. We're going to get a lot of the like introductory things. Um, it's a 1986 novel, which should be exciting for you. It's not 1886. We're in like you know, modern times. Um, and it is written by Louise Erdrich. If you don't know her, she is a um, Native American author. She is a New York Times bestseller. Um, and it actually, I have never read The Bee Queen, um, and I'm fascinated and kind of want to after reading this passage. So hopefully you enjoy it too. So it says, read the passage carefully, then write a well-developed essay in which you analyze how Erdrich depicts the impact of the environment. When you see the word environment, you want to think setting. That's your jam, okay? Um, and then also it says on two children, not just on one. The setting does have a very clear impact on one child more than the other, um, but it's there's an interesting twist. We'll talk about it in a little bit. And then you may wish to consider such literary devices. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to pretend like this doesn't exist. Did it work? Did you strike it through? No, you didn't. Hey, there it is. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to read it all to you. Hopefully you've already gone through. Remember when we're looking at setting, think of those questions that we talked about in your notes, right? When you look at setting, you're not just looking at where. You are looking at where, but that's not just it, right? So we want the where, the when. We want to look at whether. We want to look for contrasts. Um, if characters move from one place to another. Um, when things are different or the same. That's the kind of stuff you want to think about. Um, and then again, how does it impact a character? Or in this case, characters. Can I change this? Yeah, that's cool. Cool. Okay. Um, now, I actually learned something pretty fascinating um, in my, I, I heard a thing that might be helpful to you. Um, there's, in the prompt, there's a big question and a little question. Remember, we've always talked about, like, make sure you answer both parts of the question, but I heard it described as big question, little question, and I thought that was incredibly helpful. Um, because the big question here is how the setting impacts the two children, and the little question is how she depicts that. So what you want to focus on is the impact of the setting on the two kids, and then the little question is how she does that. So your, your thesis should answer the big question, your claims should support your big question, and then the little question is going to get answered in your evidence and your discussion of literary devices. So I don't know if that helps to see it that way, but it kind of like turned a little light bulb on for me. So um, we are going to write that down. Make sure you address big question, little question. Good. So when you annotate this, when you're looking for setting, be sure you're looking for the where and the when and the how and all of that. So we're looking at um, Argus is where. Um, there's a railroad, which tells you kind of a when. It should give you some implications of when. Dakota, Minnesota border, that's a where. Um, 1932, that's a where. 
I just love this description of an addition and a subtraction. I don't know if that has a lot to do with the setting necessarily, but the way that the two kids, they are described one as an addition, one as a subtraction, and then down at the bottom, when Mary continues to run into the town or where she's supposed to go and Carl runs backward, maybe that's our addition and our subtraction and he goes back to where he wanted to be. I don't know. I've never read the book, but like I just thought that was really interesting. Um, next week, you're going to talk about structure and something you want to consider when you talk about passages is why it starts that way and why they end that way, um, why they chose to like end your passage here. If you're not reading an entire short story or an entire novel, um, I think it's just really interesting to have the, the addition she continues to run in and the subtraction he leaves. Okay, um, then we have all of this beautiful imagery about the lips being violet and the feet were numb. That imagery ties into our weather. It's cold. It's winter. Or or I guess what we're going to find is it's the end of winter, beginning of spring. That's another important thing to notice when you're talking about setting um, is a season. Come on. Why aren't you working with me? It's the start of spring because you have that tree with the blossoms, right? It's not the middle of winter. It's not the dead of winter. It's the start of spring, but like not all the way. So anyway. Um, the next thing we have about setting, we have this like watery wind, it's gross outside, it's cold, um, again about setting, we're in North Dakota, um, there was a mention of the way it was in Kansas, that makes me ask, are they from Kansas, is that why they came on the train, they went from Kansas to North Dakota, um, the aunt that they're going to go stay with, she lives on the eastern edge of town. The fact that it's an edge of the town versus right in the middle, that's important to note for setting. Um, then we have they walked east down the dirt and planking of the broad main street. Um, again, that part of the description of the setting of the main street being dirt and planking tells you something about the socioeconomic status of the town. Reading the signs on each false front clapboard as they passed, even reading the guilt letters, looking for what they can't find. None of these places was a butcher shop, um, which tells you that the location of the butcher shop is outside of town. It's not smack in the downtown, which again has something to do with our setting. Butcher shop. It's the house is out on the edge, the butcher shop is out on the edge, that's going to tell you something about the setting, right? And that might help you figure out what's going on with the um, characters and how they're impacted by this setting about being on the edge. Um, abruptly, the store stopped and a string of houses, whether gray or peeling paint or dogs had their front tree began. Look at the syntax there. That's an interesting thing to note. Abruptly, comma, the store stopped and a string of houses, weathered gray or peeling paint, with dogs tied to their porch railings, began. It's just a really interesting way that that sentence is written with all of the description at the beginning and it ending with this very, very short word of began. And it might mirror your setting again, how this like monotonous long street and then like, boom, houses. But the houses also continue to go on kind of monotonously. It's almost like there's a period in the middle of the town where one sentence or one one part of the town ends, and then there's a period, and then the next part of the town begins, but they're equally as long and drawn out. I don't know. Maybe an interesting thing to know. We have some small trees, but not all places, just in a few of the houses, and only one of them has a film of blossoms. And then Mary trudged solidly forward. I love Miss Mary. She's a go-getter, man. She's just going to trudge and keep on going. And she's going to get to that butcher shop no matter what. But Carl, on the other hand, is drawn in by this tree, right? So again, the delicate perfume of the tree might have something to do with our setting and how it is. This is starting to, to get the impact of the characters, right? So maybe it has nothing to do with the where and the what. But this is definitely starting to talk about how the setting is impacting our characters. 
Um, Mary trudges and Carl stops and is like totally taken by this tree. Um, so that's where you want to ask that question of like, so far, how is the setting impacting Carl and how is it impacting Mary? And then turning to look for Carl, Mary was frightened by how far back she had fallen um, or he had fallen. And then there he is, and then the dog comes out, and the person comes out, and everybody's yelling at Carl to get away from the tree, but he's just like so engrossed by the beauty and the flowers and the perfume and this one little delicate thing in this like sea of gray. Um, but he pays her no mind, he pays the dog no mind, and then as all of a sudden the dog comes after him and he tears this branch from this tree. It was such a large branch from a small tree that blight, that's like a tree disease, it's like a fungus that goes on a tree, would attack the scar where it was pulled off. So he has a very lasting impact on the, his setting. So he does something to his setting that lasts beyond him. And then we have this like flash forward the next spring when Mary would pass on some air and she saw it bore no blossoms and remembered how when the dog jumped for Carl and then we're back in our present time again, he struck out with the branch and the petals dropped around the dog's fierce outstretched body. So he destroys all these beautiful flowers in his attempt to protect himself from the dog. And then he yelled run and they both start running but in opposite directions. Again, our addition and our subtraction. Um, so uh, what I tried to do is just pay attention to setting things here. So you should um, have a thesis statement now that addresses your big question and your little question. Carl is quite taken by his setting and he has this like moment of of hope amid, uh, amid Mud. amid the desolation of the town and the fact that we don't see any people except for that lady that comes out of her house once Carl is doing this kind of like odd behavior of like of of hugging this tree and burying his face in the flowers and then she comes out you don't see any people in your setting it's just like dark and bleak lol um I, when you you're gonna read an excerpt from a you're gonna read a, a sample essay and all they talk about is it being bleak which is totally correct it's a bleak setting but let's, um, anyway, you'll see. It's kind of funny. Um, anyway, so you should have a thesis that addresses that. And then look at the imagery. Look at the figurative language. Look at the syntax. These are all um, devices that you can use to convey how Erdrich makes this setting influence the child. And also remember, the child has an influence on his setting as well. So, um do that, submit your thesis statement, and follow the rest of the directions. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day. Bye!